we are live on Facebook now, everyone. So thank you to everyone who's here cooking along with us or who's joining after on our podcast or our YouTube. Uh, I'm Emma Goldblatt. I'm the program manager here at Shemayim. And we are so excited today to have Esty Raviv. And she is a great, great um, cook and chef at everything. And for those of you who don't know, she is a culinary enthusiast who was raised in Israel, where she grew up surrounded by the culinary traditions of her Jewish and Eastern European heritage. She developed a passion for diverse cuisines and artistic expression. From graphic design to custom jewelry crafting, she's explored various creative avenues, all while honing her skills in the kitchen. Uh, she's now based in the U.S. with her family, where she shares her culinary creations and expertise um, through From Estee's Kitchen, where she crafts delicious and nutritious recipes. Her dedication to promoting wellness extends beyond her kitchen as she encourages others to fearlessly explore new flavors and embrace a healthy lifestyle. Uh, her culinary journey has earned her recognition on platforms like KATU TV's AM Northwest and in publications like Vogue Magazine and Vegan Life Magazine UK. With her best-selling cookbook, Oive Vegan, she continues to inspire people worldwide to savor the joys of wholesome eating. Uh, so with that, welcome everyone. And Esty, you can take it away. Amazing. <laughs> Hi, everybody. I'm so, so, so happy and excited to see you. Um, especially Gil, I was uh, emailing with him back and forth, and I was happy that he got uh, to make uh, my recipes already, and they turned out beautiful, so that's great. Um, so yes, my name is Esty, but my real name is Esther, like uh, Queen Esther, so it's like perfect, you know, I chose the perfect um, timing to be here, um, and uh, I wanted to share um, why I chose to teach you these, these two specific recipes versus any other um, vegan uh, recipes, and <clears throat> the thing is, um, you can make different commentation recipes, but they're not necessarily on the healthy uh, side. Mm -hmm. And me, when I cook, I really like to focus on the health aspects of a vegan and mainly gluten-free. Why gluten-free? Gluten-free is just easier to digest, easier on your body. Um, so whenever I can do gluten-free, I, I am going for it. Um, so sometimes it can be tricky, especially for people that are used to work with regular flour um, and eggs, if you are not vegan, but um, gluten-free flours definitely works differently. Um, but they, but once you get the heck of it, you, you'll feel comfortable. And, and um, even after, you know, a few days, like the humming passion looks beautiful, they don't fall apart and they are, they're not only beautiful, but they taste so, so good. And also, you know, that you're eating something that is good for you. It's not, it's, it's kind of on the guilt-free um, side. So that's, that's great. Um, so in the initial uh, recipe, I um, I wrote down that it's better to prepare the dough ahead of time and to let it rest in the fridge. The reason I said uh, to let it rest in the fridge is not because we need the, like in, for example, when you cook with butter, you need the butter to cool down and get like hardened. Uh, here, it's more so that the flowers are really going to soak all the liquids and, 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 the, and the dough is going to become more thinner and easier to work with. However, even if you didn't uh, put the dough in the fridge, it's still going to work. So I'm going to show you today how I make the Hamen Passion with uh, the dough that has been in the fridge from last night, and also how um, it's going to work with the one that I will be preparing here with you. 
So we have two different doughs that we're going to make. One is with the lemon and one is the chocolate orange. Both of them are so good and they're based on um, the same uh, flowers. So I will start um, and I don't know, if, I, it looks like nobody's uh, baking with me. So I'm just going to show you how I do it. Okay. So I'll start with the um, um, gluten-free oat flour. Now, gluten-free oat flour is kind of tricky to find at the store. And the easiest and cheapest way to go is to grind your own flour. Just buy gluten-free oats in the store, any store, and just put them in either Vitamix or Ninja or food processor and create your own flour for a fraction of the price. So uh, to the oat flour, I'm going to add um, almond flour and the baking powder. The baking powder is going to give the, the hamantaschen more of like uh, the, the, um, the growing part, <laughs> if, I, if I can say that. Now, it's so important to mix very well the dry ingredients because we want the um we want that the baking powder is going to distribute evenly and um so that our dough is going to kind of rise accordingly so i am mixing 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 and i think it's good perfect now I'll add to the same bowl, I'm going to add all the, the uh, wet ingredients. I'm going to start with maple syrup. So I'm using pure maple syrup and make sure when you buy maple syrup to buy the pure maple syrup um, and not anything else that tastes like maple syrup, but is actually really bad for you. Um, so, and we have only about quarter cup, so the ham and passion are not extremely sweet, which is so nice. Uh, they taste amazing and they, you know, they, they're not overly sweet. Um, and to that, I'm going to add the olive oil. Same amount of the maple syrup, so it's about a quarter cup. And to that, I'm going to zest a whole lemon. Make sure when you use a lemon, when you buy a lemon and before you zest it, put it in boiling water to get rid of the wax because they do cover it with, you know, they do, um, how do you say, cover it with wax or <laughs> like they, they dip it, oh, they dip it in wax so that it's gonna look nice and shiny, but we don't want the wax in our food. So I just put, like put it in some boiling water and then I just um, dry it and, and then I can use the, the zest. And I do the same thing also with orange, you know, if I need the zest. If I don't need the zest, then it's fine. But if you need zest in any recipe, then that's, a, that's the way to go. Um, so I'm zesting the lemon. And now, I am going to, to slice the lemon and use the, the lemon juice. And I know I said about one tablespoon in the recipe, but it really, um, it's okay if it's more. I'm just putting a whole lemon and, and it works. Especially if you let the dough rest, then I, I just like, you know, more of the lemony flavor in my, um, in my ham and fashion. Um, it goes so well with the filling, you know, it can make it, makes it so like refreshing and, and so delicious. The, um, the, um, the zest and the lemon juice with the sweetness is good. And you know what? I always like 
to add a pinch of salt. And why a pinch of salt? Because it really enhances the sweetness. Um, the sweetness, yeah, from the maple syrup. So it's really nice. And okay. Oh. I think we're we're kind of losing you a little bit. Your voice is dropping. Oh, my voice is dropping. Yeah, that's better. Okay. So, oh, so, so what you were saying? What were you oh, just saying? Oh, I was saying that I added just a little pinch of salt. Oh, salt. Okay. Yes, a pinch of salt because it really enhances the sweetness. Um, so that's my dough. You can see it's a little bit. Sticky, but you can still touch it, and and I'm just gonna let it set. I'm gonna let it set in the fridge, and I'm and we'll move to the next one. Okay, so um, we will let it rest in the fridge for a few minutes, and and I'm gonna move and do the um, the other recipe, the orange chocolate dough. Then I'm gonna let it also rest in the fridge and I'm gonna take out the lemon one and we'll continue. So we're gonna make the two recipes kind of uh, together, okay? So, all right. How's everybody today, by the way? Great. Good, good weather? Yeah, where I am. Where are you? Los Angeles. Oh my God, you're so lucky. My kids are in LA. I have two kids in LA. Oh, you can't beat the weather in LA. That's for sure. That's for sure. Good for you. Eddie says we have good weather in Phoenix. That's true. Well, Phoenix, of course, of course. <laughs> Good weather for nine months out of the year. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. All right, so I'm starting now with the orange chocolate dough. So again, the same uh, dry ingredients. So I'm starting with uh, gluten-free oat flour. To that, I'm gonna add the almond flour. To that, I'm gonna add the baking powder and to that, I'm going to add a, some cacao powder. And I'm going to add also my pinch of salt. I'm going to take the whisk and I'm going to whisk it really well together. Beautiful. So where else the people are from? So we have LA, we have Arizona, I'm from Oregon. Where are the rest of the people from? If anyone doesn't want to speak and they type it in the chat, I'm happy to read that off. Or if you have any questions or anything else. Also Arizona. Oh, nice. <laughs> it's beautiful here. Oh. Now. <laughs> I know, before the summer starts, right? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. All right. So I'm adding now the wet ingredients. So we'll start again with the maple syrup. Then we'll add the olive oil. By the way, you cannot taste the olive oil. Some people are kind of get nervous from olive oil, but you don't feel it. It's just healthier oil to use also in baking. So um, that now I'm going to add the tahini. So just basic tahini, um, tahini paste, so raw tahini. And to that, I am going to zest an orange. 
I have someone asking um, if they can't have olive oil, what oil could you use to replace it? But I'm also curious if there's something you can use besides oil. Um, good question. Both of them are good questions. So yes, uh, you can probably use um, applesauce instead of olive oil, or you can use um, coconut oil. If coconut oil is... Um, um, if you can use coconut oil, then coconut oil should work as well. Thank you. Of course. Any other question? Well, I wanted to know um, a little bit about your past, like what got you started uh, into the whole world of, of cooking and baking? Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, it always begins with a personal journey, right? Like there's always something that happens and then you start kind of to make a change. And just one second, I'll just bring the a new whisk because the other one fell. But I'm, oh, wait, wait. Just one second and I'll answer. I, I just want to show you what, what I'm doing. For. I'll, I'll cut the orange in half. And I'm just going to squeeze, um, squeeze the orange into the, into the bowl with all the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients before I mix everything up. Gil also mentioned that he has used softened vegan butter before, and that has also worked. So. Yeah, that could, that, that should work. Um, I believe I... Again, I'm trying to, the only oils I keep in the house are either olive oil, which I probably 90% of my cooking and baking, um, that's what I use, or, um, or coconut, um, or coconut oil. So I don't really use vegan butter, but I believe, yeah, I believe it, you know, it's going to work great. Yeah, I think uh, most of those vegan butters are basically made of oil anyway. So. I agree. I agree. They, uh, I think many of them are made out of uh, coconut oil, if I'm not mistaken. But again, they add some more stuff to them that I'd rather avoid. But it's not necessarily bad. Um, I just like to eat like really clean as much as possible. And um, yeah. Those, those two oils are, especially olive oil is so good for us, so healthy for us. So, all right, we have here the chocolate orange dough. Here it is, can you see everybody? Perfect. It smells, mm, it smells so, so, so good. All right, I'm gonna put this one in the fridge and get get the other one. Okay. Just gonna move some stuff so I can't room. Um, so yeah, you know, it all started when I didn't feel good when I turned 40, that was 12 years ago, almost 13. And, you know, sometimes when you get older, so your, your body is less forgiving, less forgiving on so many, especially health you know, level. And I felt like my digestive system wasn't working right. And like things were like, I wasn't feeling too good. And I went to numerous um, doctors and nutritionists and all that. And I really didn't get the answer I wanted. They all wanted to, to treat the symptoms, but not treat the problem, the cause of the problem, that uh, unfortunately the uh, conventional medicine. And um, 
and I have nothing against it. I mean, I'm for it. My my daughter is a doctor, <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah, um, and and so I started researching and doing some experiments on myself, and and I read a lot. I really did like my research, and once I removed dairy and um, and meat out of my diet, I. I was a new person. My digestive system was working amazing as it should. Um, and and I decided to, you know, I I, I wanted to um, to learn all the world of, of plant-based diet and and I knew already that the health benefits are amazing. And um, I started developing all kinds of recipes and tested them on my kids. Um, and, and I never went back. I'm so happy. And, and, and I, you know, even, even if you are vegan, you need to know what to eat so that you don't have any deficiency and, and, you know, you want to stay more, um, on the side of eating whole, whole grain and, and, and whole food, um, in diet um yeah so that that's how and, and when I felt so good I really wanted to share it with the world and th that's why I I decided to write my cookbook and share it um on my blog because I know that there are so many people out there with some health issues health issues um and 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 I and I believe that we are what we eat so so eating is so important. Eating and, of course, exercising, but eating is very, very important. Now, before I continue, I just want to show you what I'm doing while I'm talking, and you can keep asking me questions. But what I did is I took the dough that I made last night, and I made the one with the lemon, so the first, the first uh, recipe. And I am putting it between two parchment papers so that I... Uh, so that it's easier to roll, it's not going to stick. And what I'm doing is I'm rolling the dough, but I don't want to roll the dough too thin. If I'm going to roll it too thin, then it's going to be uh, harder to work with. So I'm rolling it, but not too thin and not too thick. So just, I'll show you the, I'll show you exactly the, uh, wheat in the same thing. So it's really easy, you know, like if you keep the dough in the fridge, it's really easy the next day. Look how beautiful. I mean, look how beautiful the dough. Can you see? Looks great. Yeah, it looks really good. Wonderful. Now, um, I, so... The first batch that I made, I used the uh, 78 millimeter, which is three and a 16 inch. So let's say 78 millimeters uh, diameter, but I actually prefer to make them smaller. So they are more of like a bite size and a little bit more than a bite size. <laughs> um, and yeah, because then you, you don't feel guilty, right? Because when you eat one, I'm telling you, you want to eat the second one too because it's so good. <laughs> That's what happened to me. So I rather make them small and I don't feel bad. Um, perfect. So I am going to use for these ones um, and what I like to do, I like to use those big, uh, like ice cream uh, spoons, you know, those big ones. And I'm just, I'm, I'm putting the dough, uh, I mean, I'm putting the, um, the jam in one, on one um, teaspoon, and then I'm kind of sliding it with the other. So it's nice and easy. It's interesting that you put it on while it's still in the um, 
You haven't separated them out yet. No, I haven't separated them. I'll, I'll show you how I separate them. Yeah. Sometimes I separate it before I put the filling and sometimes I don't. I just forgot. <laughs> but you see how easy it is? I'm just I'm just uh, picking the all the rest of the dough just like that. And it's easy because again, it was sitting in the fridge and also um, think about oatmeal. When you do the overnight oats, how the oats kind of soaks the, the liquid, same thing. We're using the oats, so that's why it's easier to keep it in the fridge. Perfect, and I wanted to show you the tool that I'm using. So I'm just using that tool. You know what it is? It's like uh, for baking. Yeah, we have one of those. Yeah, so that's so easy. I take it even in my hand, but the easiest way to do it is to do it on a on the surface. So, okay. So I'm, I'm I'm leaving basically the round circle on the surface, and I'm just pinching. I'm pinching on one side, and then I'm pinching the two other sides. And look how pretty and perfect it looks. Now the nice thing about this recipe, they are not going to open up. They're going to stay this way. And so it's it's really perfect yeah, so, somehow it didn't come together that easily when i did it that's okay that's okay sometimes it takes also you know sometimes you need luck too and you and and you know sometimes i think you know what the more you make it the more it's going to turn out better i'm i'm telling you because you know i usually don't make those during um the like during the year and um and i just made i you know to get ready for Purim and to get ready for our class today so i made a couple of batches and the first one it turned out good i have one here from the first batch. oh here it is they were bigger they turned out good but um the second batch always turns out better that's how it works. It's the Murphy rules, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, you know how you make pancakes the first time? The first one always. Yep, definitely. Yeah. So same thing. Um, I could have probably rolled the dough a little bit thinner, but it's okay. I mean, there's no really right or wrong um but they'll stay nice and they'll keep their shape which is what we want so well the the almond and oat flour is definitely more tasty than the um regular flour absolutely absolutely and 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 you know talking about almonds is like protein so you really eat yeah at guilt free, you enjoy it, and and it's good for you, and it's a, it's still a treat, but it at least it's a healthy treat, right? Yeah, <laughs> it's a healthy treat, and who doesn't like that? So of course, if you use the smaller diameter, you'll have you know you'll end up with more um with more cookies. And I'm doing the same thing with the rest of the dough. So I'm I'm gonna roll the rest of the dough. Just like that. Perfect. And I'm gonna cut them. Do you find a difference using gloves or not using gloves? Because I've never used gloves when I'm. You know, it's not. Um, I when I cook or when I bake or when I when I'm in the kitchen, I'm usually I'm usually using gloves. I know it's not good for the earth. Uh huh. But I'm just you know it's it's what I'm used to. Yeah. Well, definitely hard to get the flour off your hands. 
Right. <laughs> right. Oh, so, um, Alisa asked, is it grape jam? I believe it was strawberry, right? So, good question. Um, I actually used Marion Berry jam. Uh, we are from Oregon and, and Marion Berry comes from Oregon. So, and my husband loves Marion Berry. So, Marion Berry is basically, it's berry that grows in Oregon and they call him Marion Berry because it comes from Marion County. That, that, but I guess my husband sees the difference. I don't know, but it, it does taste really good. So I would do either strawberry or raspberry. Um, strawberry, raspberry will go really well with the filling, uh, um, with the dough, I'm sorry. The lemony uh, dough and the uh, and the jam, the sweet jam, uh, goes really well together. Nice. I've never had a um Mar Marian Marian berry. I can show you the box. I actually um here in Oregon I could find it. I could find it um at our local Costco, but I guess you know some some of the times you get local stuff in your in your local costco um not necessarily in every costco and it's seasonal so not you know not all year you can find it but really any any of your treasure jam i like the jams at trader joe's because they are really like um not too sweet not too sugary not like a little bit a little bit on the healthier side and they taste amazing, even the apricot one. All right, so here, look how pretty. I'm done with the lemon, with the lemon um, dough. Okay, let's see how many we have here. Seventeen, and I think that's what I wrote. All right, I'm going to put it in the oven and then I'll take the other dough and show you how I am going to do the other bread. Um, 10 minutes, Emma, you yes. gonna, are you going to look at the clock for 10 sure. minutes so that I'm going to check it? Thank okay. you. All right, let's take the other dough out of the fridge. Okay, so the chocolate dough, I did not uh, prepare one ahead of time. So I'm going to use the one that we just uh, made. So it is going to be a little more sticky, but it's going to work. I'm glad you're doing both types so people can kind of see the difference. Exactly. But again, it's going to be easier if you do it ahead of time. All right. So now I'm just going to roll it. So this whole part um, with the chocolate dough will be pretty similar to the lemon it, one, how it, you're rolling it. Yes. It, um, again, what was the, the question again? Oh, no, I was just checking that um, it's basically the same process that we did before with the lemon ones. Right. Just here, the dough is different and the filling is going to be different. Too. I'm going to show you how, how I make the filling as well. Great. All right. So now I'm going to have these. Um, Let's put this one here. All right, I'm going to start. I already see that I rolled it a little thin, so that might be a little tricky, but we'll make it work. Wait, wait, uh, what did you say? That I think that I rolled this one. Oh, a little too thin. A little too thin. You know what? I'll just roll it again. 
that's the nice thing about it that you can you can work. redo it. So there's really no mistake here, and no no mistake that you cannot skip. Yeah. Before I, you know, before you bake it. Yeah. If it's after I, it, then yeah. Yeah, I remember being told not to overwork dough. But I did the same thing that you're doing with reworking it and re-rolling it, and it seemed to be okay. Yeah, again, because when you are using gluten-free flour, they behave completely different than, than um, flour because they don't have the gluten to you know, to, to hold it together kind you, of. You know, actually, as we're talking, I think the reason is because when you're not, when you're, uh, if it's not vegan, then you're using butter. And I think that the reason they tell you is because if you overwork a butter-based dough, then the butter, it's supposed to be little particles and they probably melt together. And that's why... Hmm. Yeah, I I think that probably overworking it is is for um, doughs that have butter in it. Okay. Now I don't know if you saw, but the, what I did is I I had your um, sink with water. I wet the cookie cutter because the dough is still very sticky and it it, it got stuck to my cookie cutter. So I just wet it with some water and then and then it's fine. Perfect. Now, um, we are going to make the filling, um, and so that I can show you how I did it. Okay. So I have here about half a cup of um, vegan gluten-free chocolate chip, and I am going to add some um, uh, coconut oil and some maple syrup. And I'm going to put it for 15 seconds in the microwave. So just one second. And why do why do I put them for 15 seconds and not more? Because I don't want my chocolate to get burned. So we'll do it in 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 probably in two times. So the first time 15 seconds, I'm going to mix it up. I'm gonna mix it up and then I'm taking a clean um, a clean spoon. I'm gonna mix it up and then put it for like 10 more seconds, see if it's good enough. It looks like it's gonna be good enough because um, it's already kind of um, three quarter melted. No, what I did was I took a pot and put some water in it and then just boiled it and then set it in there while I was doing the dough. And by the time I got done, it was melted. Perfect. Yes, that's the, the Bon Marie technique. And that's an even better technique than this one. That's for lazy people, what I'm doing. So 10 more seconds. In the meantime, I can start taking the rest of the dough. Out of the way. Perfect. Just kind of cleaning up in between them. All the excess excess dough. Beautiful. And I'll get the chocolate. Oh, okay. I wanted to share with you also something that I just did couple of days ago and it is so good so good so good all right so i made a vegan caramel sauce and oh, okay. i told you that i am really focused on the health aspect of it right like i i you know i really want my recipes to be healthy so caramel usually is 
sugar, right, and butter. I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so I made it with dates and um, um, maple syrup and and some and some other stuff. But oh my goodness! Oh, and coconut, like coconut milk from a can. Oh my goodness! It turned out so 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 good. If we'll have time, I'll I'll show you, but um, you can um, look it up on my um, on my blog. I actually put the link uh, in the chat, so anyone oh, perfect can see it. All right, my chocolate is a little runny. That's okay. I put a little bit of the chocolate in the center. Again, I'm leaving the circles of the dough and leaving them on the parchment paper. I created the the hamantaschen and I and I'm just putting it straight on the baking sheet. Again, I'm gonna take another another teaspoon of the butter, pinching one side and then pinching the others. Once you pinch the sides, you're good. I heard today um, that because we think of the the hamantaschen as being shaped like Haman's hat, but right. that in Israel you call them Haman's ears. Right. I also <laughs> I was also confused with that one time. It's it's really funny. I thought the same thing as you did, um, that it's Haman's hat, right? But no, it's Haman's ears. So right? that's, pretty, that's pretty weird and not that appetizing. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> oh, okay. So my so my also the idea that I had is that if you make the caramel sauce, you can mix the chocolate, and I'm gonna do it um, in a second. You can mix the chocolate that we just the chocolate sauce that we made with the caramel sauce and create an even deeper flavor uh, of a feeling and it's amazing so so good so i i did it um i did it and it turned out so good how are okay i think not 10 minutes too far oh, it literally have seven seconds okay perfect so i'm gonna check and see i'm just gonna make one more here Perfect. I think that my chocolate is running because I put too much of the, the oil, the coconut oil. Uh, but you have the, I, I didn't measure correctly, but when you do it, you have the correct measurements um, and it shouldn't be that runny. But also if you wait a little bit, it will get hard. So yeah. no. you, don't, you don't think it was just too long in the microwave? No, no, no. No, it. Oh, and you know what else? I forget because I'm late, so I forget. I forgot to put some orange zest in. The oh food. yeah. So don't do my mistake. But you have the full recipe, um, the correct recipe in my blog, so you yeah. will not forget. Let me well, check. Now, yeah, now no one will forget those parts because <laughs> we want it to happen. Wow, 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 I wish I could convey the smell, but it's, mm, oh, they're so, oh my gosh, it tastes, oh, it smells to die for. Okay, it's a little hot, but 10 minutes was perfect. And look, they don't need to be extra um, dark. They they should stay pretty um, light. Uh, but you just want the edges to be kind of um, golden brown. And then the bottom is perfectly brown, you see? So the first thing I do, I don't know if you can see, but okay, I'll bring it here. But what I do is I put them right away on, on a cooling rack so that they down. But they're so good. Now, 
I'm going to send my kid in the lay, some ham fashion. My son is my younger, or my youngest is going to visit his older sibling. And I'm going to send some ham fashion to them. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited. Perfect. Okay, now we will continue with the rest of the of the chocolate. Ham fashion. You see, now I don't even use the 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 other parchment paper. It still works, but it's easier with the. I'm I'm being very gentle, so I don't want to break the the dough. So I'm gonna whip it a little bit, and I love my humming fashion the traditional way, just with um, you know with powdered sugar. Even without the powdered sugar, um, I think it's sweet enough without it. But when you serve it to your guests, it's always, you know, it looks prettier with the powdered sugar, for sure, for sure. And I wanted also to show you how I mix it with the caramel, and I'm going to show you the caramel feeling, okay? And it's a pretty good size. I told you this is like the smaller um, diameter. Uh, where's the number? Mm, it doesn't say, but it's smaller than, it's probably like three inches, I believe. Of course you can use um, like a glass, like a regular glass. But it turns out good. And you know how I know that my recipe is good? It's always when I compare my recipe to a Mishloch Manot that I get. And usually <laughs> what I get are star not edible. Not yeah, edible. I would say. It's like... Really? It's, it's so nice to give something that is more nutritious and like healthy. Because people think that healthy is bad, but health, healthy is so good. I mean, if you know what you're doing, healthy is so good. And who doesn't want to feel good, right? Yeah. I don't I don't think people want to make it themselves. They want to just buy it. Yeah. 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 That's that's also true. Now I want you to see what I'll grab another spoon. And I want you to see the caramel sauce. It looks like peanut butter. Mm -hmm. Okay. It looks like peanut butter. Oh my gosh. Oh, it smells so good. And look what I'm doing now. So I'm adding to the chocolate sauce. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to add about two, two nice uh, teaspoons to the chocolate sauce. And I'm going to use it in the rest of the, my son, my little one loves, little one, he's 16, but I call him little one. Um, he loves chocolate. Too. So. Who doesn't? <laughs> what? Who doesn't? Exactly. Who doesn't? So. My, my five-year-old granddaughter doesn't. She doesn't? No, she's coming around though. She's what? She's coming around. The last time we saw her, she actually, because I make, I make hala like twice a week, vegan hala, and I put chocolate chips in it, and she doesn't yeah. like it. <laughs> she doesn't. No. I, I, you know what? When it comes to hala, I like my hala plain. <laughs> also, so it depends. But in desserts, in desserts, it's good. Dessert, it's really good. So I make them a little like fatty, like the, the dough is kind of um thick, but it's good. And I never waste any of the dough. If like the last piece, just roll it, flatten it a little bit with your hand, and just well, I put I put some of the dough just in without um just 
flat and they're sort of end up like cookies. Yeah, exactly. Could be great cookie, but but you can also roll it like a ball and uh -huh. mush yeah. it. <laughs> but I but I'm with you. I never I never throw food out. Yeah. So you see these are uh, chocolate ones going into the oven for 10 one minute. Now I don't know if you want, but I can show you. I left here some of the chocolate ones that I um, made ahead of time. Um, how you can decorate them. Um, how you can decorate them if you don't want to do, or like if you want to get a little fancy or for kids or for like if you go to your synagogue and you want to bring something that looks a little bit like a gourmet and, and like, um, so I can show you if you want. That'd be yeah. great. We have about seven minutes left of the program. So that would be great. Perfect. So I'll melt. So these are, this is some chocolate that I had left. I'm just going to melt it for a second. And then what I'm going to do, so I'm going to use chocolate, like I'm going to drizzle some chocolate and I'm going to decorate it with some uh, sprinkles. Uh, the sprinkles I got uh, do not have any food coloring. So um, they oh, use, that's great. Yeah, they use natural, natural coloring. Where did you find those from? These are from Whole Foods. Yeah, Whole Foods has them. It's still a little thick, so I'm going to add a little bit more, um, just a little bit more oil, coconut oil, so it's going to it's going to be easier to um to, to drizzle it over the um, yeah you see just adding a little bit of oil will help um all right so i'm going to take i'm going to take the cookies just going to place them on the on the parchment paper and I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take with a spoon. Um, and I'm kind of, it's not as runny, I'm sorry. Should be more runny and then it will be, but I'm trying, I'm kind of, um, um, I'm trying to kind of uh, drizzle it in a, they make it like stripes. Exactly. To make like stripes. And again, even if it's not perfect, it's okay. You need to enjoy what you're doing. That's the most important thing. And you need that the taste is going to be good. And the taste is good. We know. Right? So I'm taking the sprinkles. And the sprinkles are going to get stuck into the chocolate. So it's kind of cute. And then it doesn't matter if it's not perfectly, um, you know, if it's not like perfect, perfect, but kids for sure are going to love them. Oh, yeah. They're so cute. That's and great. I, and I will do some more. I'll take some more and I'll show you. I'm going to do some with, um, with white sprinkles. So more elegant, a little bit. Basically, the chocolate is going to get hardened in the fridge, and 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 the chocolate here uh, act as our glue, basically. We had a few people that had to head out, but they said thank you so much and that they enjoyed your presentation. Amazing, <laughs> good. So now I'm mm. just going to sprinkle some white ones. Speaking of the fridge, I did I did freeze um, some of those, oh, so I'll tell you I'll tell you how it comes out. Okay, perfect. Yeah, let me know. And these are with the whites. Mm -hmm. So the white ones, 
and it's it's kind of nice, you know, when you put it on a plate with the. I I personally I love the white. It's like so elegant, so pretty. So you just put it in a nice plate, and you serve it and your guests are going to love it and they're not going to believe that these are also healthy version like no um no refined sugar no bad oils and just like really good stuff so so it's a win-win win-win situation and it's more chocolate too <laughs> they look amazing um <laughs> Just before we head out here, did you want to share where people can find you and um, find your cookbook and things like that? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So first of all, um, excuse me, uh, I have a website and it's estiskitchen.com and uh, you can find, I have a cookbook. The name of the cookbook is Oy Day Vegan and it's on Amazon, also on my website. And I have a food blog and I also have a TikTok account and Instagram account if you guys want to follow. I share every day. I share new stuff and new recipes and, and I started to make uh, videos all the time. So you'll get to enjoy like new videos. And that's it. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you so much. I went ahead and put that into your website in the chat. Thank you everyone for um, watching. Uh, Esty, if you had anything to say before we head out about the recipe? Um, no, I don't think, um, unless you want to wait and see how they comes out. But if not, then uh, we're, you know, I think, uh, I think I'm done. I had a good time and I wish you happy for him. Um, thank you. Yes, happy for him. And thank you everyone for being here. Thank you, Esty, for teaching this class it made me really hungry um i'm sure i'm not the only one uh <laughs> but yeah thank you everyone check out sd and uh have a great rest of your week